Good morning. Happy Monday. Yesterday was our celebration and it was glorious. Even with the rain, we managed to make it to the church without getting rained on. And then we had a lovely party and that was indoors and that was great. So everything worked out. Thanks be to God. As we do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Good times. Today is a fun saint that I'm a big fan of that probably most people don't know him and also probably don't know how to say his name. St. John Eudes. Just rolling forward. Let's keep going. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, by a sudden blow, I am taking away from you the delight of your eyes. But do not mourn or weep or shed any tears. Groan in silence. Make no lament for the dead. Bind on your turban. Put your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your beard and do not eat the customary bread. That evening, my wife died. And the next morning, I did as I had been commanded. Then the people asked me, will you not tell us what all these things that you are doing mean for us? I therefore spoke to the people that morning saying to them, thus the word of the Lord came to me, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I will now desecrate my sanctuary, the stronghold of your pride, the delight of your eyes, the desire of your soul. The sons and daughters you left behind shall fall by the sword. Ezekiel shall be a sign for you. All that he did, you shall do when it happens. Thus, you shall know that I am the Lord. You shall do as I have done, not covering your beards, not eating the customary bread. Your turbans shall remain on your heads your sandals on your feet. You shall not mourn or weep, but you shall not rot away because of your sins and groan one to another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. You were unmindful of the rock that begot you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. When the Lord saw this, he was filled with loathing and anger towards his sons and daughters. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what will then become of them. What a fickle race they are, sons with no loyalty in them. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. Since they have provoked me with their no God and angered me with their vain idols, 
I will provoke them with a no people. With a foolish nation, I will anger them. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. A young man approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? He answered him, why do you ask me about the good? There's only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked him, which ones? And Jesus replied, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come, follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. John Hughes, just a little word about him, was a very fine priest, and I'm a huge fan. He did a lot for the liturgy in the sense that he, knowing the context of the history of the texts and stuff that's used in the church, he wrote a couple masses and offices, specifically of the Sacred Heart and the Immaculate Heart. So these things are rather new in the history of the church, you know, 350 years old or so. And uh, he coalesced these things together. In the second millennium, there aren't that many times when you have totally new feasts constructed. The new feasts, like Corpus Christi is a new feast. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas did that. St. John Eudes did these. Sacred Heart, Immaculate Heart, which I think is really, really cool. And they're beautiful. Anyway, that's kind of the thing. Well, aside from the liturgical kind of functional thing, also, yes, the devotion to the Immaculate Heart and to the Sacred Heart. He was all about keeping together what God already made perfect. So that's St. John Hughes. I want to talk a bit about Ezekiel. So we've been reading Ezekiel for a little while now, and it's all kinds of very interesting images and lots of stuff. Today we have a rather striking thing because unlike, you know, angels who are terrifying and otherwise presence of God, we have Ezekiel's wife dies. And God says, but you're not allowed to mourn in the usual way. And he uses this as an allegory to talk about the way in which he's going to correct his people. So we've heard this before as well those kinds of punishments they seem like punishments that come from god in the prophets aren't so much punishments as correctives because after all this is the same ezekiel that we also have that image of bones in the desert getting flesh again and sinewy and coming back to life ezekiel is a prophecy of hope of health of repair of bringing back together again so what's going on with this the image of what mourning looks like to Ezekiel is certainly a little bit foreign from us. So God says, don't do the usual mourning things. And instead, put your turban on, don't cover your beard, and don't eat the customary bread and other things, i.e. go about your life as normal. The customary bread, that's interesting. The bread of mourning, the bread of pain. That's just an interesting thing by itself. Mourning that part of grieving is a healthy thing. It's a way in which we, very much on our own, on our own motive, do the process of healing. Mourning is therapeutic. It's for the sake of healing. Being sad in general, in, in this way of going through the process and not just sitting there, 
is meant to be healing. That's the reason why we do it. God says, don't. To Ezekiel. Now, this is to Ezekiel for the sake of the allegory. It's not saying don't to us, don't to you. That's not the point that the prophecy is making, but rather a much larger thing, which is that in the course of the prophecy of Ezekiel, in the kind of the, in the bigger picture of what's going on, God is the one who is giving health, who is therapeutic. But he needs the people, though, to go through this part of being without the presence of god and so he says i'm going to desecrate my temple which is like that's the wrong direction that's not the right way but for the sake of also making sure that this lesson is made and and this is the reason that we receive it now the <clears throat> it's, it's interesting that it's noted that you're not going to do those things of mourning and so therefore you're going to rot because it, because not doing those things of mourning you're not going to heal until I heal you. That's the message of Ezekiel. Again, not in the kind of ups and downs of our lives, which are very rich with their ups and their downs, not with our own mornings, not with our own sadnesses, but rather by allegory, using that as a way to explain what God will do. And of course, this is the message that we are very familiar with, that God is the one who supports and heals, that God is the one who is really the source of all health much more so than our emotions or the ways in which we deal with them, which are important. One of the things I always remind people is that our emotions are important. We must give them dignity. When we feel anything, it's not nothing. It's not something that we should just ignore ever because they're part of us. They're a real response. They may not be the like the, the thing that we should definitely follow for the impetus of the choices that we make, that's usually a bad idea, actually, but they are real and we can't ignore them. When God is telling Ezekiel to essentially ignore his emotions, he's doing so by making this point, ignore your emotions and suffer more. As, as a way to express a desire, don't be self-reliant on these things, but rather rely on me. And that's the lesson that's being made to Israel, who has not relied on the Lord. This is the path that it leads to. In the gospel, there's this wonderful moment. Of course, it's a very famous gospel. We all know about the rich young man. And the thing that kind of strikes me today that I want to talk about for just a second is the order of things. Sell what you have, have treasure in heaven, then come follow me. It seems that usually the treasure in heaven comes after following. But in fact, the way that the Lord presents it, for whatever reason, has it in this order, which is also an important one to consider, that the following of the Lord isn't the place where the treasure starts. You know, the, the treasure starts has to be beforehand. And where does that come from? So in, in the dynamics of grace, it's, it's, it's the Lord who prompts. The grace to conversion is a grace that comes from God first, not just because, oh, I'm deciding that I'm going to start doing this now. Well, as the way grace works, it's the Lord who prompts us. Then the other things follow. And so... Looking at this particular passage in that dynamic, the prompting is to do that which is good for the poor, the real charity, because then that will give treasure. And then it's possible to follow the Lord. Now, this is also the same intuition that leads to a variety of other bad things, like you can't follow the Lord at all until you do the first thing, which is not true because of course they're all mixed together. And after all, the whole point of this saying is in the context of this young fellow asking, what do I need to have life? The bigger picture is actually the Lord told him first. It's, it's a moment of teaching that he has to follow or not. And then with that teaching having been followed, then come the other things. So it's 
not just a point A to point B to point C, but rather with the idea of the end, there's a variety of dynamics that go interchanging in the inside, which is just a fun thing to think about. And that's really all I got because it's the day after the procession and that's like what it is. That's what I'm thinking about. So you can think about it too, if you want to. Good enough. As we do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar and for all bishops, that they may bravely proclaim the gospel in all places and at all times, and may continue to fight against injustice in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Catholic Church, that she continue to stand strong in the face of persecution. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's people throughout the world, that we may remember always the virtue of humility and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our parish, that as we remember and grow in devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we may ask for her intercession in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for whom and what else shall we pray? To the intercession of St. Monica, for our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully chose the priest St. John Hughes to proclaim the unfathomable riches of Christ, grant us, by his example and teachings, that growing in knowledge of you, we may live faithfully by the light of the gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Great. Good times. Remember, no coffee on Wednesday this week. All right, that's it. God bless you all, and see you later. Bye-bye.